We're now in a position to implement undo and redo. Before we do that, however, we're going to need to fix a very subtle bug, something I didn't realize probably due to my lack of familiarity with Vue3's new reactivity system. So I'm going to show you that one now. The first thing I'm going to do is grab out my boards so we can render those and see what's going on with our history of our game. I'm now going to go ahead and render these in here just to give us some debug information. Let's save this one off and head back to our browser and see what's going on. So you can see we have our initial state here. They're all blank, which is exactly what we expect. Let's go ahead and make a move. And you can see something, something surprising is happening here. The new state is what we expect. It has that counter at the very top. However, the initial state has also been updated, and this is not what we expected at all. What I wanted to do was keep a snapshot of each state as everything changed, but what we're actually doing here is incorrectly updating the initial state. We need to go ahead and figure out what's going on here and see how we can fix it. It turns out the bug is here in Game.js on line 17. I thought by using the spread operator here, I would be able to get a new array which was not reactive anymore. However, this doesn't seem to be the case. Even though I'm using the spread operator here to get a new array and create this new variable, it seems to still maintain views reactivity, which is really not what I wanted to do. The only way I could see to work around this was by using a very dirty hack, which I'm going to show you now. Instead of doing the spread operator, I'm going to use json.pass and json.stringify. This is a classic way of cloning an object. It's pretty unperformant and also fairly dirty. And this is definitely not ideal, but I can't think of a better way to do this right now. If you do know a better way to clone a reactive array in Vue, please let me know. Anyway, I'm going to go with this for now because I know it does work. I'm going to save this one off and our tests are still passing. If we head back to our browser now to test it out, I'm going to go ahead and make a new move. And you can see this is now working as expected. My second entry here has my new counter, but my initial entry hasn't been updated at all. And this is much more what we were going for. Now that we fixed that bug, let's go ahead and implement undo and redo. We need to have some way firstly to keep track of the current move. So I'm going to create a new, a new, a new variable here. I'm going to call this one current move, and it's going to be a ref initialized to zero. And now we're going to go ahead and use that throughout this composable. So I'm going to delete this in here and instead of using the length of the array, I'm going to say current move dot value. So that should be current move dot value. I'm also going to update down here inside of my, my computed property with exactly the same thing. So it's going to be current move dot value. If we save this off, our test should still be passing. Apparently it's not. And that actually does make sense. What we need to do is make sure we're incrementing the current move every time someone goes. And I'm going to do that right down the bottom here. I'm going to say current move dot value and increase that by one every time someone makes a move. And now our test should be passing again and so they are. Now what we need to do is implement undo and redo. And all we're going to do for that is change the value of current move by one or, or increment it by one or decrement it by one. So let's go ahead and create those variables or those functions. Firstly, we're going to have undo and all that's going to do is grab the current move dot value and then we're going to minus equal one from that and it's going to be exactly the same for redo except we're going to be adding on a value the next thing we're going to do is update our test to make sure everything is working so let's head over to our spec file and do that now we're going to use this current test up here it's getting a little bit large but i think it's fine for now so what i'm going to do is go ahead and make a new expected value let's copy this one and uh, create a new variable down here and i'm going to call this one undid state I'm not sure if that's really the best name, but I think it's probably fine for now. And we're going to expect it to be this state here. So we're going to move to this expected state, and then we're going to undo once, and that's going to take us back to this state. Let's go ahead and try that one out. I'm going to first put our expectation down here, and that one's going to become undid state. If we save this off, of course, it's going to fail because we haven't undone the move yet. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to go ahead and destructure this and grab undo. And all we need to do is jump down here and do our undo call. And this should all hopefully be working and our tests are now passing exactly what we expected. Again, this is highlighting how unfunctional this is actually is. We have a single function call here with no arguments and no return value. So we immediately know there's some mutation going on. We're aware of this mutation, so it's fine. However, if you did want to do a purely functional implementation, you would actually be returning a new board here, which is the current state. So this would actually be something like const undid state, and that would be equal to the result of undo, something like this. This is something we'll explore in a later lecture or possibly a later series. Anyway, now that we've done that, we're going to head into the next lecture and add some buttons in the interface to call undo and redo.